Hi, and welcome to the first of what will be many enlightening interviews I will have with people from across the voiceover world, from beginners to veterans, voice actors to voice coaches, and also producers and sound engineers, you name it, if I can get my hands on them, I'll interview them, so that people like myself, beginners, and even some pros, can get some really handy tips. Thanks for popping in. My name is Richard Emmett, and I'm starting my journey into the unknown world of voiceover. I'm doing this so that I can then enlighten you with the knowledge and the insights that I gained from traveling along this nebulous journey, so that you too can also find out what it really takes to get into and start into the voiceover world. To kick this off, I have a fantastic guest and my premier guest. She's a female voiceover artist who has 30 years or more of experience in the industry. She has a penchant for punk, metal, dunking her dairy milk chocolate into her tea, and also enjoying a nice glass, or maybe even a bottle of bubbly at the end of a very hard working week. At the age of 17, she was the first uh, multicolored haired punk girl in Stoke and she went on to be the manager of a punk band called Discharge, and she has kept her purple hair ever since. Working daily, even currently, as a voiceover artist, she's got her finger on the pulse with all the latest trends, and she teaches her students, including myself, expert techniques so that we can become high-quality voiceovers, so that when we enter the industry, we have a high standard. She has a licentiate from the London Academy of Arts and Music and she began teaching voiceover back in 1989. Now we share a similar, we share similar roots back into the Midlands and it gives me great pleasure to bring to you the one, the only, Tanya Rich, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Hi Tanya, <laughs> great to see you. Hi Richard, how are you? You look great in your jumper, looks fab. Yeah, you're enjoying that. It's, it I almost am. looks a little bit 3D because it kind of moves a little bit. It's a bit weird. Yeah, it's a bit weird, but I kind of like it. It's, good. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah. And uh, I want to thank you as well for giving me your time this afternoon to do this interview. I really appreciate that. Well, you know, I wouldn't do it for everybody, Richard, but it is you after all. So oh, you're too kind. OK, so let's dive in, shall we? Yeah. So as I've said in the introduction, this is primarily based for newcomers or newbies, new bros, as they say. So I'm going to try and direct the questions towards that. So if there is somebody who decided that for whatever reason they wanted to get into the voiceover industry, what would you say would be the first things that they should consider to make a success of it and to get started on a, on a good leg? Gosh, wow, where to begin? Well, the first thing they should consider is, is this a job that's really for them? Are they prepared to put the time in, the work in, the money in? Because it is not a get rich, quick fix, overnight thing that people seem to think it is. Uh, and that's mainly because a lot of people think it's just talking and reading. And of course, as you know, it's far from that. Um, and the thing is, uh, it's one, for some reason, voiceover is one of those things people think it's so easy that anyone can do it. So if somebody goes to a party and his auntie tells him, oh, your Sean Connery impression's marvellous, Malcolm, you should do that voiceover stuff. That is not enough to base your kind of whole career trajectory on. So first of all, think seriously about it. You know, how do I feel about reading anything, saying anything, or I'm only good at doing funny or silly voices. Is that my comfort zone? That's only my comfort zone. You're reducing your work capabilities. You've then got to think about how congested and it is congested the market is at the moment you've then got to think about the time you're going to have to put into it you know if people work with me they have to do homework they have to practice i know when they've not been practicing you know i'm a bit like santa when people are like naughty or nice i know when they've been naughty and not practiced <laughs> practice properly that is um and so there's a lot of there's a lot of things to consider but the one thing to reiterate it is not a get rich quick scheme you are going right. to, it's going to cost you a lot of money and time. And then, you know, even if you've got the voice and you get the coach, you've then got to have your own studio. Uh, even having access to a studio is not necessarily the greatest idea because, well, one, you know, what's going on at the moment, but also you need to know how to use the kit yourself because a lot of it's self-record. 
so much time and investment, both, you know, actual time and, and financial. So that's what I would say to them, first of all. Okay, awesome. So, yeah, yeah, so it really is like a serious consideration because obviously it's going to be a business. It's going to be a career. So yeah. it's not something you can just take on as a, as a whim of like, oh, yeah, well, I, can, I can do that. Because it is, like you say, it's going to cost you money and time and a lot of uh, effort as well to yeah. get to a standard that, uh, that you should reach. Yeah, and, absolutely. And on that, uh, on that uh, thought process, should someone actually start practicing before they really invest a lot of money into you know, the equipment? Should they start practicing on their own first or is it best to, to get a coach? Well, you see, the thing is, in the beginning, let's say you think I've got a nice voice. I'd like to do voiceover. Now, I don't know how other coaches work, but I only coach by audition. OK, so first of all, they've got to do an audition and everybody gets to do this audition regardless, unless they are really well-known voice actors that I personally know. And I know their process that they just want to say, tweak something or change something. They have to audition. That gives it a level playing field. Once they've done that, I then decide after listening to them, if I think if I if I hear anything that I think is something that I can't work with, I might suggest something else, um, you know, like working with my vocal technique coach, Eamon, for example, before they work with me, because there's no point otherwise. Um, then what else will happen? And then, OK, then they'll do an introductory session. Now, in the beginning, I always say, look, it doesn't matter about your equipment you've got. But if you're going to do several lessons and you're starting to improve, at some point, you are going to have to get yourself a, a set up a microphone because you need to learn mic technique. You need to hear yourself on, on headphones, proper headphones um, and all these things. So in the beginning, I would say don't get anything because it may be that somebody like me or another coach says, it depends how on, I don't know, I'm very honest. And I'll say, look, I'm sorry, in my opinion, your voice, um, you know, what you've done recorded here, I can hear that you're embarrassed, for example, just by recording these two scripts. Uh, I don't think it's something that you feel comfortable with. And if you don't feel comfortable with it in this stage, I can't actually see that changing. Um, and I, that happened to me recently, actually. And the, the lady wrote back and said, you're right, I was embarrassed doing the scripts and I can't believe you could hear that. Which I don't know why people say that to me, but anyway. And, uh, <laughs> well, and I'm she familiar said, with your uh, ears. I know that they're very sharp. My famous bat ears. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and basically she said, you're right, I just want to do silly voices. And I said, then this is not really the industry for you. And she said, I really appreciate your honesty. So, you know, things like that. But let's say then I say, okay, I can hear some tone in your voice. It's quite nice. Let's have a session and let's see what we can do. Because, of course, they have to have a good pair of ears as well as a good voice or, or at least something. So if they can't hear what I'm telling them or changing, then we've got a problem. So don't, I would say, don't rush out and buy yourself a load of expensive equipment. Start off just on your laptop or whatever. But if you then start to get better at it, which you should do with good coaching, and you start to feel, yeah, this is something I can do. Then you've got to get to, at some point, because otherwise people get into a situation, they go into a studio to record a reel, they're wearing headphones, they're hearing their voice properly for the first time. So that's no good. Yeah. And that can be a bit strange as well for someone. Oh, yeah, very much so. I mean, I am used, I'm so used to wearing headphones that I even answer the phone sometimes with them on and bash myself in the head. I happens, or I try to leave the booth and end up boinging myself back. <laughs> like I'm on a little bungee cord. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, apart from when you're doing radio drama, there is no reason not to be wearing headphones at all times when you're recording. That's my personal opinion. Right. Yeah. Good advice. OK. Um, so I, I heard you mention Eamon. So yes, I know he's a, a new member of your team and he does. He's a voice coach, right? So why, why would somebody want to see a voice coach instead of going directly to a, a voiceover Maybe. coach first what's the difference well um because some people have got certain uh characteristics with their voice that will get in the way of their progression as a voiceover artist for example if they have a very clicky sound on say k's and things like that it's to do with tongue position in the mouth uh some people have um selective um speech impediments if you like so sometimes they'll say an r and sometimes they won't and they've just got lazy Sometimes people have got, a, they, they maybe have a very clicky mouth and there's a reason for that. And it's not just to do with producing lots of saliva or, or being dehydrated. There's actually a physical thing that they're not doing. 
So although I can, I know, you know, I can say this is how the, your breathing will work. This is how this will work. At the end of the day, I am not a vocal technician. Um, somebody uh, once said, you know, it's like the, the whole, the, the physical part of it, why your tongue works the way it does in your teeth. I, I actually don't know enough about that to say I'm an expert, but Eamon does because that he's got an MA in vocal production and that's all he does. And uh, he's brilliant at it. So uh, if anybody comes to me and, and I listen, work, I say, you're slightly sibilant, but you're not always sibilant. You need to see Eamon. And then they go and have a session with Eamon. And then they come back, usually off after one session, like a new person. I mean, one of my students, he's really good, but he's from a, a different part of the world. And so he, his natural diction is to really short the ends of the word. So he would like to say, hello, Richard. And, it, you know, although he's doing everything else, he still does things like that through his text. Like, you need to work with Eamon. Well, I did a lesson with him the week after. He was like a different person. It was amazing. Wow. And now we can progress him forward, you see. That's awesome. Yeah. So you got like a, that's really clever because now you've got a team of guys that can. That, oh, that, anything yeah. I can't do, I am very, very happy to hand it over because, yeah. you know, I know what I am good at. I am good at teaching people how to be a really great voice actor and i base all my techniques on the things that i do that's mm. kept me in the industry for over 30 years so you know and and changed because the other day we found some old tapes of mine oh my goodness from the 80s i was so oh posh my. oh my god i was like the really? I, I can't believe yeah because you had to be much more posh then so funny <laughs> i'm gonna put them out occasionally but i actually was like going oh no it's so old-fashioned and everything it's really bizarre that'll be a laugh yeah. <laughs> so what else have you got or who else did you have under your uh, under your belt as other coaches that you work with? Uh, well, um, I don't do audio books because I haven't got the time or the patience. Not because I don't love doing character work. I absolutely adore it. But I just it's a lot of work to do an audio book and to do it well. So I right. brought on board the wonderful Helen Lloyd, who is a master mistress rather of, of the audio book. And she's a great wow. coach, too. Um, I am not a marketing expert, uh, so I decided to have two different people doing marketing. Uh, they, obviously, everybody, by the way, works for themselves, but they also come under the Richcraft umbrella, uh, which means that they're people that I've particularly selected for their talents. So I wanted somebody that was old school and had and had been in a voiceover for over well longer than me. And so I asked Philip Banks if he would help out with people who wanted to do certain types of marketing. But I also wanted somebody kind of younger and somebody that was had really started a career not having any coaching and through their own marketing skills actually started to work more and that's Lizzie Jobling and she really knows a lot about all the, all this modern stuff you know all this Instagram business so she's really good at that um, and and she's also now becoming an even better VO which is great um, so who else do I have and of course I had to take on another coach because I am only one human and I am a busy voiceover so um, Alicia's my PA but she's been training with me the last four years i taught her originally at bath spa when she did her, her her acting degree and so she is now turning into i don't want to say a mini me because she's a she's an alicia but you know her coach she coaches like i coach because i've she's heard me coaching and i've shown her all the things i do um i've also got the fabulous richard lang who is a public speaking coach and also an acting for camera coach um wow. the discipline you need on a camera he's a, he's an actor he's been in loads of stuff like well Game of Thrones, you know, all that, all, all that old rubbish, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you know. He, and, you know, he, he he's really good. So he's very good at teaching people how to self do self-taping, auditions, things like that. Because, of course, when you're an actor on camera, it's all about micro-movements with your eyes and being very still. As you know, when you're a voiceover, you're like this all the time. So very yeah. different disciplines. Um, I think that is everyone. And then, of course, I've always got my producers, my invisible producers that do either meet the producer things with my students uh, to see how ready they are towards their journey to get a reel together or that do the writing for me, all kinds of stuff. So quite a good team. Yeah. Get in there. Building my yeah. empire. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but it's really good because it means that somebody could just basically tap into your, your empire and they'll get everything that they need yeah. to get going. Yeah. And I mean, I've also got, I'm going to be bringing on, uh, you know, I mean, I can, I teach character work as well. Um, but sometimes people um, want something specialized. So if anything, people want something, something specialized, I will find them the best person in my opinion. And that's people I know, they have a great track record, they can deliver the goods, 
and that they will not you know do anything that would go across against the ethos of Richcraft. right cool so what's the purpose behind all that then is it you know do, do you have a particular goal that you want to to reach with new people coming into the industry or or just yeah i do I, yes i really do i mean apart from wanting to take over the world obviously no. well there's that as well <laughs> uh, no um i really want to raise the standard up to a, a good level and unfortunately because it's been so overpopulated by voiceovers and when i say voiceovers like that i mean actually i'm being sarcastic um that uh there's an awful lot of people saying they're doing it but very few are doing it you know not very few there's a lot of great vos out there but there's a lot of people not doing it at particularly high standards they've made a show reel which was i don't know how they made it one hour of coaching and there's a show reel how do you work with that how do you then get work you didn't know how you made it you don't have your own kit oh you know it's just not worth it so i want people to be able to make reels that are genuine for them you know, on, on the reels that my students make, there are no big brands. They are reels made in the style of things that that particular voice can voice with confidence and ease. And that's okay. that's what we do. So, uh, yeah, I just want to raise the standard of the industry again. Awesome. That's a good purpose. Yeah. I like it. It's, uh, you know. <laughs> well, the thing is, that as well, for, for a new person, you need you need some stability when you get into it, because when you're approaching this on your own, you don't know where to go. If you have somebody like yourself who's stable and you're well experienced and you know virtually everybody in the industry, it's it's really calming to know that you're getting on That's board nice with the hear. right person and the right yeah. team and they will guide you in the right direction. For me yeah, anyway, I mean that's important. That's why Yeah, it is important. I think club. so. I want people to feel that, you know, they've got it's it's like a little Richcraft family. And, um, you know, as I say, because I, I am a working VO and in between, every, you know, <laughs> I'm voicing and then I do a bit of uh, do a coaching and then I'm voicing. So my whole day is taking up with that. Um, and uh, and so I'm constantly working in the industry, too. Um, but I just want people to feel that, you know, they're getting honesty and the honesty is, is really important to me. That doesn't mean being unkind to people. But there's no point telling people they're marvellous when they're really not, because you don't do them any favours in the long run. And it always shocks me when I work with, with people that they've either, they've either had some form of coaching in whatever form, I don't know how they've done it, and they don't know the basics of voiceover, which I find extraordinary, or they've taught themselves by listening to local radio. And unfortunately, a lot of the the stuff that's going out not all of it but there is a lot of this of, of delivery that really is not particularly good um you know you know me i hate the old bing bong and sing song it's horrible uh, i don't like extending on words deliveries you know why are you talking like that that's not real thing. you know and things like yeah. that so there's a lot of stuff out there but of course they they've copied what they've heard right that's not their fault <laughs> exactly and and do you do you keep yourself on top of all the kind of the, the, the latest trends of what the clients are looking for in their voice talents these days and then transfer that across to your students? Yeah, I mean the thing is, you know, as I told you in the 80s, you know, it all had to be very quite RP and and, and separate characters, obviously, and it had to be a very stylized. Now, of course, they want everything to sound more natural. Now you would be forgiven for thinking that natural people talk like that all the time. Coming now, it's coming in there. That's not how people speak at all. That is not natural. That is totally unnatural and I hate it. Um, but um, to be natural for a lot of people is quite difficult because real people, you know, let's say for example, oh, I don't know. I've got a, a something, a letter and a, a real person go, dear sir, thanks for your letter. This is really nice. Please get in touch. Now, nobody's, as you know, when something is recorded, it needs to be a lot more than you think it does. You yeah. know, it always makes me smile. I'm working with people and they think they're being outrageous by just giving a bit more of a warmth to the, the delivery. I go, no, it records as cold as ice. So they don't use real people. So, but a real a voice actor can go, dear sir, thanks for your letter. You see, so although I'm not going, dear sir, thanks for your letter or thanks for your letter, um, I'm actually um, bringing it to life. And I think that's mm. that, that's the difference. Yeah. So I know about this. I know how to do it. I do it every day, you know. Yeah, that's uh, and that's the point as well. Practicing, uh, I think getting uh, getting the coaching and then practicing as often as possible to also make it become more natural 
that you can do yeah. these techniques and too. And practicing properly, and that means recording yourself. You know, a lot of people, uh, they have a voice, they like their voice so much that, you know, they practice talking and reading scripts, but they don't actually record it enough. So they don't actually mm. hear what it sounds like recorded. And at the end of the day, this is a recorded media, and this is what we need to do. No yeah. matter how nice you sound on, you know, talking in a, in a shop or over a restaurant table, it's how it records. Right. And you have to be objective about listening to yes. yourself as well, right? Yeah, very objective and grow a thick skin. It's not an industry for people who are, you know, who are very needy for being totally, you know, pacified and complimented all the time. I mean, of course, you know, you have to like, you, you want to encourage people, but don't tell them lies. Don't give them that fake thing. Oh, that was fabulous. Yeah. No, I hate all yeah. that. Yeah, sure. It's false, fake. It is false. And I, and I don't like it. It doesn't help. You know, I mean, it's like I always say to people, nobody cares about your backstory. When you get in front of that microphone, whatever's happened everywhere else, leave it behind. You know, it doesn't matter. I've, I've worked in this booth with tissues piled to the ceiling, sodden with my tears at times in my life. But as soon as I've heard the producer come on, you know, my ears, how are you? Fine. Everything's fine. It's always fine. It has to be. They don't care. I mean, it's not that, you know, they don't care, but they don't care, actually. You know, it's not a TV show. It's like, I think I compared it to being like, you know, you know, America's Next Top Model, let's say. You know, you've got to be a certain height. You want to walk the runway. You'll get somebody going in. They're very pretty, but they're five foot tall. Doesn't right. matter how their backstory is. They are not going to make it as a top fashion model on a runway. And it's yeah. the same with VO. You know, and you can dress it up as much as you like, but at the end of the day, you can either do it or you can't. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And that's why it's gonna it's why it's important to get the, the, the practice in and coach with the right yeah. people. Yeah. Now this might sound as a, a bit of a strange question, but is it okay <laughs> to be new in the industry? You know, is it is it hard yeah. for new people to break into it? You know, is it is it okay to be open about being new? You're asking me some fucking questions here, Richard. Um, <laughs> Making you think today. It's okay to be new. Well, you know, because you want, because you want to be in the industry, you the radio station groups, they will, they will know of you or not, or they'll know somebody in their office. Have you ever heard of him? Oh, yeah, I know him. He used to do this. Okay. There's wrong with being new, but I think there's a lot being wrong with being lazy. Right. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. a lot of the forums that I just occasionally drift my eyes over uh, if I have five minutes to go on Facebook or anything, I see the same questions being asked again and again and, and people saying things, ridiculous things, like I've been asked to do an invoice. How do I do that? Oh, God, have you got the World Wide Web? Go on it. How do I make an invoice? Things like that. That's not just new. That's naive. That's ridiculous. And, mm. and, the, and the constant, the same questions again and again. All you can do, I think, is to, if you're going to try and get work is to say, hi, you know, I'm a new voiceover. I had coaching with this person or, you know, I used to work in radio in this. This is my voice reel. You know, that's all you can do. I don't think there's anything wrong with being new, but don't be new and not good. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the thing. I think that's why for me personally, I, I'm taking my time to practice. OK, I, I built the booth. I've got the equipment. I'm doing lessons with you um, and I'm not in a rush because no. when I launch myself, I have to represent the industry. And if I'm rubbish, then it's not a good representation. You'll get of, one chance, really. Yeah, exactly. And you've yeah. done a lesson with Eamon as well, haven't you, right? I have, yeah. Yeah, and he's good, he isn't was, he? He was great. I know he's great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, um, you know, I think this is the thing. What you're saying is so sensible. Because uh, you do get one chance, and if you mess it up, that chances are you won't get a booking again for that particular client. Right. You also you need to feel confident, you see, in your ability, and that's why having a shiny show reel after doing say two hours on a Saturday afternoon in wherever big city, insert city here, and then going away with a show reel. It's not going to make you a great voiceover because you don't even understand the fundamental basis of how you're doing the things. You know how how much there goes into it. If honestly, if I had a pound for every time people said to me, "Oh, I didn't realise you have to think about so many things." Oh God! If you're doing a commercial. How many things are going through your mind? 
timing, breathing, intonation, client's name. This is overwritten. I need to stretch that out. I need to speed that bit up. Those are the things that take time to learn. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I get people all the time saying to me, well, how long will it be before I can make a reel? And I go, I don't know. They go, what do you mean you don't know? I say, cannot tell you because you, I can't magic you good. I can magic you in the way I teach you and I can make you learn techniques that hopefully will stay with you forever. And, you know, a lot of those techniques, which I know students I haven't taught for years till phone me up or tell me I had a session the other day and I used that hand technique or I use this technique. And it's like, great, you know, but I can't magic people to a level that they want to be if they are not genuinely capable of doing it. Right. And that's the thing. Yeah. But it's no, no quick fix. Indeed. Indeed. And um, how would you go about preparing a student for the marketplace? You know, they've spent some time with you. They've done some lessons and, you know, would you... I guess you would advise them first. They're like, yeah, I want to get out there. I want to start earning some money. I want to get work, you know, but is there some preparation that you do with them first? Well, I mean, in order to get get work, they need to have some something recorded that shows them that what they can genuinely do. Okay. So if they want to do that with me, they get to a certain stage when I get them in a situation where they have a real life situation. So they get three scripts five minutes before uh, they nip onto clean feed and then they have some bloke talking to them who doesn't know anything about them they don't know anything about the person talking to them all they know is here are your three scripts you've got to voice them and you've got to take the direction i give you and act upon it okay um and so depending on how they do in that and i can listen to what they're doing and sometimes i sit there going oh i've told you not to do that why are you doing that okay and then that voice will normally go yeah no that wasn't good was it i'm not ready yet and others will be they'll do really well and they'll cope with everything and then i'll get the feedback from the producer and they'll say yes they're they're really this was good that was good and you know and then we move on to make a to make a reel but the reel is real so basically they have about 25 to 30 minutes coaching on the script on the scripts on the reel and then we go over and i'm basically then directing i shouldn't have to be telling them how to do it at this stage I can suggest maybe give us a different read on that last line or something like that as a director, but I shouldn't be there as in a coaching you know, capacity. Uh, and then now what I would do is say, and now you need to learn how to market yourself properly. And I would either suggest they go and then work with Lizzie Jobling or Philip Banks, you know, and, and, and say, uh, you know, this is, these are the two people I've chosen. They've got very different styles. Tell me which one you'd like to work with. And that's it. You know, that's why I've take, let them take over the marketing because you know, it's hard enough marketing yourself without everybody else. So I am not, I can't be an expert at everything. Right. No, that's really good. So, you, so someone really has like a pathway yeah, all the way through from the beginning, from the beginning point to the, to the launch point. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And do your, do your guys also take care of websites as well? Well, I work with want? some uh, really good people that I know that make websites. Helen B is great. Voiceover acts and websites are great. I work with a fantastic web host called Brad Newman, upper level host, uh, upper level hosting and he's based in the states but i don't think he ever sleeps because if i ask him a question he's like back to me within about a moment so uh and he's fantastic very supportive um and so i know good people to point them towards and and to be honest even if they just make a simple site themselves i can tell them the key things that they need to do you know um you can throw thousands of pounds at a website at the end of the day there's only there's only a couple of things that people really care about what's your name have you got a broadcast quality studio what do you sound like yeah <laughs> that's all they care about at the end of the day so you could do that on one page couldn't you totally yeah keep it yeah. simple yeah exactly yeah. okay so if people wanted to get in contact with you uh and wanted to take your empire on how yeah. would they do that well, um, they need to, there's a form on the Richcraft Biz, it's www.richcraft.biz, um, and they go there and it says a section that says work with Tanya, and they have to do auditions. Now, if they don't want to work with me, but say they've done, say for example, let's take a different story, say there's an they're experienced voiceover, but they want to do audiobooks, they get in touch with me and I say, okay, and we'll, I'll set up everything with them for Helen. Um, but if they're going to work with me, um, they do the audition. They can do that off my page. It's a calendly thing and they just pay for it on there. And okay. that 
then comes to me on my email, which is tanya at richcraft.biz. And then we take it forward from there. Um, okay. And of course, uh, you know, I always teach the first lesson, obviously, because I am Richcraft. Uh, and then uh, depending on what ability the person has or where they are in the market, because sometimes I get people that have been working in the industry on and off for, say, 10 years, but they're not really moving anywhere. They're not getting anywhere. Why? Well, that's why they've come to me. Um, but Alicia also will coach as well. So they get the experience. They get working with two different people. So although Alicia teaches the ideas and, and the same principles that I do, of course, she has her own personality to bring to that. And uh, yeah, so that sometimes I have to tell her, I have to shout through at, at, at her inside voice because she gets so excited. <laughs> <laughs> and I can hear her in my booth. I'm like, be quiet. <laughs> so yeah, so it's good. Brilliant. And we have okay. a lot of fun as well. Yeah, and that's the main thing. Eh? It's got to be fun. Yeah, it's got to be fun, but it, you know, it is a serious business. It's not something just to dip your toe into, really. No, no. I, I think, think that's so. something I've realised as well whilst I'm researching more into the industry and the more people I talk to in the industry as well. Um, you know, it's it's something to be taken very seriously because it is an art. It is a craft and, <laughs> um, and you need to respect yeah. that. And the people that work in it also need to be respected. And, you know, that's yeah. why I want to practice a lot and train a lot and you know get my demo done and um and then get out there but i want to do it when i'm when i'm ready you know when i do a job for a client and they tell me something over the headphones like some direction i want to know how to adjust myself exactly you need to understand what they mean and also understand that sometimes directors don't know what they mean they don't know how to tell you what to do and you've got to think oh they don't mean that they mean this you know i I got somebody said the other week to one of my students, I want you to sound dramatic, but they didn't. They just wanted them to sound more intense. So they didn't right. know. And so the poor student was like, what do they mean? Um, so that was quite an interesting one. Oh, I forgot to mention one of my team. It's the lovely Arthur over in America, who's uh, he's an indie game reel uh, maker. He's a, an actor too. And he works with a fantastic team. They all work in the indie game sector full time wow. uh, in America. And um indie games are the way forward of course because the big games you know of course everybody yeah, wants yeah. to be in those games but it's a very small pool and it's, it's often who you know getting in there i mean you've got to have the talent to sustain yourself but you know there are ways um but uh yeah so they're really good so in fact they're making me a new reel i'm doing a consultation with them myself for a new reel so you'll be able to hear the their what they can do with me oh wow uh, you know because you, you have to update your reels all the time yeah um but uh yeah, I was going to say as well, when you're saying about you've realized you're going to take your time, I think you've got a very good attitude, Richard, and it's a very humble attitude. You don't, you know, you're, you are really walking before you can run. And that means that when you run, you won't fall over. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. that's something I really don't want to do is fall over. No. You know, no. So <laughs> I'm uh, no. putting the time in for sure. And it, I think talking of uh, acting and, and, and uh, games, is that something that one should do as well? Should one like do improv classes maybe and acting classes? Would that also improve one's... I don't think acting classes would hurt. Yeah. I mean, some people like to do improv. But you see, at the end of the day, I suppose if you want to do improv, do improv. It must be fun. I've done it a bit myself. And as long as it's not being a tree or something like that, it's not my bag. But, you know, <laughs> but to make characters, people, it's the physicality of it. Um, but you see, even being a, a, a VO is a character in a sense, because you've got to change your body posture, you've got to change where you're using your voice from, depending on the client. Um, so I think, um, you know, if you want to do gaming, great, but everybody wants to do gaming. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. And that's why I decided for, for the guy I thought I'm going to use for my reel, for this, for this, you know, for making uh, gaming reels, is going to be an American young guy. I mean, he's only in his 20s, but he's really got his finger on the pulse of what's happening not just now but it's going to be happening in the future and that's where you want to go for sure yeah. you know a friend of mine is in a very small game an indie game um marvelous kevin brighting in the stanley parable very small game now it's a huge game you know yeah. uh so there's a lot of opportunities out there but you need to people need to learn how to make characters yeah yeah for sure yeah. okay sounds exciting yeah. i'll afford you're real say, you know I'm sorry, what did you say? I'll say very exciting. I look forward to your reel. 
Yeah, no, well, I mean, I did one a long time ago, so I thought it was about time I did a new one, but I'm so busy. I'm finding time for myself to do that. It's quite hard, but sometimes you just get to say, no, I'm doing it. And I was also going to say, you know, you talked about websites and things. Yeah. Um, I don't think there are many professions where you could, one can go and buy a website and calling yourself a voiceover. Like, you know, I like, I don't know, bathroom fittings, but I'm not going to be telling you rich plumber. Do you know what I mean? Come to me right. for all your plumbing needs. I, I find extraordinary. I get people asking to be coached by me who do the audition, who've clearly never done any professional voice work, but their names are things like, you know, X the voiceover or <laughs> Hold a minute. <laughs> why would you call yourself that? To me, I always feel a bit embarrassed about it. It's like, oh, why are you doing that? Don't, please. There could be a bit anyway. of running before they can walk. Very much so. I mean, by the name, for goodness sake, if you're, you know, if you're called, I mean, I don't suppose John Smith's around now, but as in available to buy. But if you've got, a, you know, a name you think you're going to spend eight quid at GoDaddy and buy the domain, at least you've got it if anything comes of what you want to do. But don't just call yourself something when you're clearly not. I could yeah, call right. myself Dr. Rich. Oh, I, I could, but, you know, I'd be a bit rubbish. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. Work yourself up to it, you know. Get that get that brand worked out first before you. Yeah, and, jump in and branding's say, brand. so important, so yeah. important. Yeah. Yeah. Nice one. Yeah. Okay. My last question for you: yeah. Is there anything I can do to help you out? In what way? I don't know. In your in the in the voiceover industry in uh, in your business, uh, is there anything I can do? Because I, I feel that in the industry, um, it's all about because there's there's a nice community of guys. And girls. Yeah, there is. And we help each other out a lot, you know. So I was just wondering, is there anything I can do? Um, Are you any good at painting? My humble beginnings to help you out. Are you good at painting? Sorry? You to do some DIY for me. That would be very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, I'll get my tools in the back of the car. Yes, and get down here now. Um, no, it's a very nice thing to ask. It was just to tell people what a great experience you've had if you've had a great experience working with me and i know occasionally we still work together um you know um okay. the people the caliber of the people that i surround myself with the way i teach um yeah i mean and just get it out there and that just because you know that yes I, i'm not an audiobook narrator no i'm not a marketeer but i know great people who are you know I don't know why you've got clicky teeth, but I know a man who will, you know, so that's the kind of thing. But yeah, I mean, nobody's ever, nobody's ever asked a question before. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Just rabbiting well, now. It's going to be one of my regular questions for my interviewees. And oh, I, I want to thank you very much for giving me this time and being my You're premier welcome. guest. Yes. Um, anything else you want to know before I go and do my job? No, I think that's it. Thank you. You're very yeah, welcome. I, I appreciate I appreciate it a lot, and uh, I will get this out fairly soon. 